Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And boy, oh boy, has someone been passing around the good stuff at Wargaming HQ recently. Because good sweet Jesus, do we have a ship to talk about today. We actually have several ships to talk about today. But one ship in particular is just... <laughs> okay, okay, Ouija. Okay, so yeah, we got a couple of crazy ships to talk about today. Well, one really crazy ship to talk about today. And also some more information about the Pan-American Cruiser Line. They have been officially announced in full with fully detailed models this go-around, along with their design style and stats. So before we get into this, just make sure you drop a like and leave a comment in the comment section down below. 80% of YouTube is now, unfortunately, just finessing the algorithm, and the algorithm likes to see likes and comments, so if you wouldn't mind sacrificing your like and comment to the algorithm overlords, I would very much appreciate that. It helps the video get pushed out more and more, and that is just the state of YouTube nowadays. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into this. So, we have two dev blocks to talk about today. We're going in order of release, starting with the crazy new American battleship, the Illinois, and the Pan American Cruisers. So, I will be reading from the dev blog, which you can find linked down below if you want to follow along as I read. And I will also be throwing up images that are relevant to the dev blog as we go through it. So, again, if you want to see these for yourself, links down below. So let's go ahead and get into it, shall we? New ships, closed testing 12.0. The Pan American Cruiser Branch and American Tier 9 Battleship Illinois have been added to the game for testing. The tech tree of Pan American Light Cruisers will be added to the game for the upcoming closed test session. Branch features good rate of fire but weak armor and a small supply of HP. A repair party that restores 50% of the damage taken to the Citadel starting at Tier 2. What? They get a repair party at Tier 2? Huh? Okay. Access to hydroacoustic search from tier 4 onwards. From tier 4, the ships are also equipped with torpedoes with average characteristics which can be used as a last ditch defense if enemy ships come too close. Availab availability of a fighter beginning at tier 5, tier 6, 8, 9, and 10 ships have the option. Oh, availability of a fighter beginning at tier 5. Tier 6, 8, 9, and 10 ships also have the option to replace it with a spotter. The Tier 7 ship does not have a fighter or spotter. From Tier 6, the ships have flat ballistics that make it easier to hit enemies at long distances. And there is also a choice between Hydroacoustic Search and DFAA in one slot. Also from Tier 6, the ships can use Combat Instructions. Mechanically, they, they work similar to Combat Instructions available to Super Ships, but they have different requirements and bonuses. Ships of Tier 7 and up also have the Repair Party Consumable, which restores more HP per second. So, what's the downside of these ships? All I'm seeing here is weak armor, but their Repair Party that they get at Tier freaking 2 restores 50% of Citadel damage. And then from Tier 7 on up, they restore more HP per second, according to Ouija. Um, yeah, it sounds like if you don't dev strike these things, they're just going to stick around. So, hmm. So, let's see what they say from here on out. In order to activate combat instructions, Pan American cruisers need to fire off a certain number of salvos in which a specific number of shells must hit the targeted ship. Okay. For example, the Tier 10 cruiser San Martin, uh, Martin or Martin needs to fire five salvos to activate combat instructions but it will only activate if eight of the shells fired in those five salvos hit the target. Please note that in order for a salvo to count to which combat instructions, you need to use volley fire, double click, uh, double click. Sequential fire and single fire do not work. Okay. Once activated, combat instructions provide the cruisers with a temporary bonus to the armored penetration of their HE shells and the ship's maneuverability such as maximum speed acceleration and rudder shift time. If you activate combat instructions on San Martin with a commander who has learned the skill IFHE, you will be able to penetrate 50 millimeters of armor. The conditions for activating combat instructions for these new ships are more challenging than for super ships, but at the same time they provide quite a significant bonus to the ship's characteristics. Okay, so 
for me at least, this is starting to get into the too arcadey side of things. Like, this game has always had a very nice balance of arcade and realistic features. And don't get me wrong, it leans heavily into the arcade side of things. But this, like, these combat instructions that magically give your shells better penetration and then make your ship more maneuverable gives them a faster run of shift time. Really? Um, I, don't know, I can understand if it, you know, you have the reload booster or thing like that. Not, not the reload booster, the alternative firing mode where you can swap over and say your ship's using a, um, an auto loader. I can buy that. But these combat instructions that have mostly, well, have entirely been on super ships now making their way down here. I'm not too big a fan of it. So, yeah, not a, mm, mm, don't like that. Also, too, again, these ship scenes, they don't really have downsides. From higher tiers, they have flat shell ballistics. Not from from higher tiers, from tier 6 onward, they have flat, flat ballistics. So, I'm assuming that means, you know, like the Austin shell arcs. Now, I don't know if the shells are the same, like, air drag coefficient that the Austin shells have. But they sound like pretty comfortable cruisers to play already. So, I mean... We've seen these ships already. The uh, tier one is the Hercules. Tier two is the Amarante Barroso. Tier three is the Vincetti Guerrero. Four is the Cordoba. Uh, five is the La Argentina, or, or La Argentina. How do you say that? Uh, six is the is the Amarante Cochrane, which is the Italian ship. Uh, seven is the Corano Bolanesi, which is a real ship that they had. And then from 8 to 10, it's just proto boosters. So the Ignacio Allande, Allande, uh, the Satander, and then of course the San Martin. They do include the, sh the uh, ship's stats here. So let's take a, a brief look at that. Um, let's start with like the tier 5. So tier 5, the La Argentina. La Argentina. I believe that's how you're supposed to say it. 23,900 HP, 13 millimeter plating, 30 second fires. Uh, the the guns, 3x3, 152s, 14.5 kilometer maximum range. Uh, reload time of 9.5 seconds. Okay. Uh, let's go look at the, the, the Woosters now. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. San Martin, 49,800 HP. That is pretty low for a tier 10 cruiser, even for a light cruiser. 25mm uh, plating, 30 second fire, 7% torpedo damage reduction. So she has 2x2 two two plus 2x3 152s with a 17 kilometer maximum firing range. Uh, 2200 HE shell damage, again 30mm HE shell pin. So without I have HE, you already have 30mm pin right there. 11% fire chance though, that's pretty terrible. Well, I mean, good for it, terrifying for anything it's, it's uh, firing against. 6 second reload time. And then, let's see, it's consumables. Does it say? Okay, so specialized repair teams. It's active for 20 seconds. It regens 996 HP per second. Good God! That's, um, 20,000 HP, just about. Yeah, once you throw the flag on there. And 50% Citadel uh, Restoration. What type of heal does the Tier 2 have? That's what I'm curious about. Um, the Tier tier 2. It just says Repair Party. Okay. Yeah, so the... Pan American cruisers, uh, they're looking pretty terrifying. Um, really comfortable to play, it looks like. Again, with that uh, specialized repair teams, or, you know, hell, re uh, repair teams on um, the mid tier cruisers. I mean, that that's putting them a leg above everybody else. But who knows? They might be super dev strikeable. I know they have very thin armor and all that jazz, but how many times this game has thin armor equated to you just get nothing but overpins on them with anything with slightly decent AP? So, we'll see how they develop in testing. Alright, American Battleship Illinois Tier 9. The biggest WTF moment of quite some time in World of Warships. No, your eyes are not deceiving you. Those are quad Des Moines turrets on the Illinois. Yeah! Alright, so they say, a variant of an Iowa-class battleship which is re-equipped with more powerful anti-aircraft guns and 203mm main battery guns placed in quadruple gun turrets. The ship, unusual in its gameplay, has the highest rate of fire among the battleships in this game at the cost of its small gun caliber. Improved ricochet angles for AP shells, as well as a significant number of main guns, will help you deal a lot of damage and constantly keep the enemy 
under fire. The battleship is most effective at medium range but can prove itself in close combat due to her secondary armament with improved accuracy. Illinois can gain quite high speed but has poor maneuverability in combat. The ship can also have powerful air defenses and an improved repair porting symbol that restores more HP. Battleship BB-65 Illinois, named after the 21st U.S. state, was ordered in September 1940. She became the fifth penultima penultimate ship of the Iowa class, but the laying down and construction of Illinois was constantly delayed until at 22% readiness, further construction was cancelled in 1945. The battleship was excluded from the Navy Register, but the hull remained on the slipway until 1958. Over the years that have passed from ordering to scrapping, several completion plans with a complete rework were proposed for BB-65 and her sister ship, who suffered the same fate, BB-66 Kentucky. The bow of that ship is on the Wisconsin. First, it was proposed to convert them into aircraft carriers. Illinois was almost volunteered to serve as a target ship for a nuclear weapons test, and BB-66, which was in a higher degree of readiness, was considered for completion as an anti-aircraft battleship and later as a guided missile ship. It seemed interesting to us at World Warships to create an Iowa-class battleship with 230mm main battery guns. In 1946, it was even proposed to develop a new four-gun turret with the same 203s Mark 16 guns as the, as the Des Moines-class cruisers had. In the process of actual design, it turned out that this automated turret system required large internal alterations of the ship, which would have been more convenient to do with Illinois since she was only barely a fifth of the way complete. So, believe it or not, they're right, this was a design proposal for the Illinois, although it's not quite accurate the way they're portraying it. Um, and they could have, they can of course change this later, but the design called for, a, a, of course, a huge rework of the ship, stronger AA guns, and these War II era turrets would have been refitted or, well, I guess not really replaced because they weren't on yet, but, um, changed out with more modern guns uh gun turrets kind of like the, the sherman and the austin have um but yeah that this was a, a a real design proposal believe it or not so i'll give them credit for doing something different um i'm not sure how it's going to work out <laughs> but it's different i'll give them that all right so let's check out the ship characteristics so she has 81,100 HP, 32 millimeter plating, 25% torpedo damage reduction, uh, 3x4 203s, 18.5 kilometer firing range, that's pretty good. Maximum HE shell damage, 2800, HE shell pin, 34 millimeters, that's good. Chance to cause a fire, 14%, it's also good on 12 to 1 guns. Uh, 823 meters second HE shell velocity. Maximum AP shell damage 5,000. Initial velocity 762 meters a second. Again, that is the improved American AP as well. Reload time of 10 seconds. Ooh. I mean, that's fast for a battleship, but 203s. I mean, I guess with 12 it'll balance out. And plus, you can put the module on there and you can put. Halsey on there with Confederate and Adrenaline Rush, so you can get that down probably to 8 quite easily with that. Uh, reload time of, yeah, 10 seconds, 180 time of 30 seconds, maximum explosion 2.245 meters, oof. Mm. A sigma of 1.8. Um, airstrikes, um, yep, that's the, wait, airstrikes DC, I'm assuming this is the, uh, yeah, depth charges, yeah, DC, okay. Uh, I was confused for a second. I was about to say, well, I was like, they're giving this thing airstrikes too, but no, that, that's just for the uh, depth chargers. Secondary is 10x2s, 127, 7 kilometer base range, maximum HHL damage, 1800, 5%, yep, standard American, um, 127s there. So her AA, she has 24 by 2 of these dual 20 millimeter guns. Um, okay, hold up a second. Why aren't the 203s, the dual purpose AA 203s, Counted with the AA. I thought that was the, the ship's thing. I'm not sure if that's a typo or intentional, but um, that seems to defeat the purpose of the dual purpose AA guns if they are in fact not dual purpose. Hmm. Maximum speed 32.5 knots, turning circle radius 130 meters, standard Iowa stuff here, rudder shift time 17.2 seconds. Um, yep. And damage con and repair party, so 28 second runtime, 535 HP per second, 
80 second reload time for charger space okay so yeah illinois was not expected them to do this um i would expect that the next iowa added in the game would probably be the new jersey and i hope to god they don't do anything like this with the, with the new jersey i don't think they will since she was you know completed and launched and such but i'll give them that it's different it is different will it be good maybe I don't know, it's such a weird concept putting actual cruiser caliber guns on a battleship. Like I know we have the battleships with like the you know the the battle cruiser guns or the three tens or the three oh fives, but yeah. We will see. I I'm interested. I will say that. It's hard not to be interested by this monstrosity, but yeah. Alright, a couple of new ships also got announced. This is in the second dev blog released today. We have the Dyson and Colossus. So, they say, Japanese Tier 9 battleship Dyson and British Tier 8 aircraft carrier Colossus have been added to the game for testing. So, the Dyson, they state, a fast battleship with powerful guns and torpedo armament. Based on projects drawn up, to the 19, uh, draw, drawn up in the 1910s, the ship inherits a number of archaic features, <laughs> including the placement of anti-mine guns in casemates. Okay. The battleship is distinguished by by her few but accurate main battery guns. The ship's armament is also represented by a torpedo tube with a high range and torpedo damage. The battleship has a very high speed but a large turning circle, so sounds like you know a lot of large tier 9 battleships. The consumables arsenal of this ship is represented by the damage con, a repair party which stores an increased number of HP per second, as well as the choice between a fighter or a spotter with a significantly increased operating time. Okay. Dyson has poor armor for a tier 9 battleship in large dimensions, which makes the optimal gameplay happen at medium to long range. At the same time, her good speed allows, if necessary, to change flanks or dictate range of engagement. Until the beginning of the 20th century, large Japanese warships named battleships and cruisers most often were named in honor of mountains. That's not only because Japan is a mountainous country, but also because in traditional Japanese religion, mountains are considered the, ha the habitats of powerful deities. Since many of these mountains are volcanoes, the association with powerful ships spewing equally destructive fire is quite appropriate. According to the rules, uh, according to the rules approved in 1905, the names of the mountains began being assigned to the armored cruisers of the Japanese Navy, and then to the battle cruisers they eventually replaced them. However, in the case of ships being reclassified after refit, for example, Congo-class battle cruisers, which were converted to battleship, battleships in 1930, they were not renamed. Our Battleship Dyson is a development of a fast battle cruiser designed in 1916 as part of the first phase of the Navy's construction program, known as the 8-8 program. It assumed that it also would have underwent a major modernization in 1939, retaining its name in honor of a volcanic mountain in, south in southwest Japan, considered sacred since the ancient times, and where a, and where a highly, revered Buddhist, highly revered Buddhist monastery has been located since the 8th century CE, its temple complex is included in the list of Je Japan's national treasures. Alright, so what does this thing have? 69, nice, 1,300 HP, that's a little low for tier 9. Uh, 32 millimeter plating, 53% torpedo damage reduction, that's pretty nice. 4x2, 410, so the good old Japanese 16 inch guns. Firing range of 20.6 kilometers, okay. Um, secondaries 10x2, 127s, and 16x1, 140s. Both can get out to 7 kilometers. That sounds pretty nice. Um, what can they pin? Did they mention what they can pin? Da, 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 da. They do not. That would have been too convenient, wouldn't it, Ouija? Uh, 35 knot maximum speed. Damage con, repair, fighter, or spotter. So the spotter is active for 240 seconds. That's pretty nice. All right. So it sounds like, you know, a pretty typical Japanese BB, but with less armed. The Japanese BBs tend to be uh, well-armored and have good range for their tier. So this is more of a fast, less well-armored battleship, but with only eight 16-inch guns. What's the reload time on these on these guns? Uh, can't imagine it'll be over 30 seconds. Oh, oh, no, I'm sorry. That, that was the, re the, the 180 time. Reload time, 27 seconds. Okay, that sounds pretty nice. Um, Sigma 2.1, maximum dispersion 232 at 20 kilometers, so once you throw a couple of modules on there, you can get that down pretty well. Alright, I'm, inter I'm interested. I'm interested in wargaming. And then the Colossus Tier 8 British CV. 
The lee ship and a series of light naval aircraft carriers built in the UK at the height of World War II. The Colossus is an intermediate link between high-speed attack aircraft carriers and low-speed escort aircraft carriers. The aircraft carriers are armed with three types of squadrons, attack aircraft with AP rockets, torpedo bombers, and bombers that dropped HE bombs in level flight. Attack aircraft rockets have good armor pin, which will allow them to deal good damage to various types of targets. The torpedo bombers have a good HP pool, but low speed. Also, the torpedo bomber squadron contain only two attacking flights of three aircraft. The bombers carry a large number of high explosive bombs, but have a large spread ellipse. At the same time, the aircraft carry itself has a low speed, which will make it difficult to quickly change position. She also has no secondary armament and weak AA defenses. Okay! So that's cool. Colossus real still a historical ship. Nice to see her making her way into the game. All right, guys. So that is it for the new ships. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I think Illinois is going to be a very interesting battleship to say the least. But yep, they, they have some of the good good over there and they are in fact not sharing. So again, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hope you all have a wonderful Friday. I will be live streaming right here on the channel from 5 p.m. U.S. Central Time to 8 p.m. U.S. Central Time tonight. So make sure to come out for that on both Twitch and YouTube. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful Friday, wonderful weekend. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.